Today we are going to learn about chronic suppurative otitis media also called as chronic otitis media in this disease there is a long standing infection of a part or whole of the middle ear clip characterized by ear discharge and permanent perforation tympanic membrane held within 3 month if it is not held within 3 months then we can say that it is the epithelialized perforation of tympanic membrane move toward its type it contain two type first one is tubo tympanic disease another one is atico antral disease both have common characteristic that is perforation tympanic membrane contain two part first one is pars tensa another one is pars placida in pars placida there is always atico antral disease pars tensa contain two part central and marginal if perforation occur in central then there is always tubo tympanic disease except in posterior superior quadrant in marginal that is involved fibrous annulus part of this tympanic membrane have always atico antral disease let's move toward first one that is tubo tympanic disease look at this image this is the image of tympanic membrane and it have central perforation so it is the main characteristic of tubo tympanic disease it is the safe type of disease because the infection doesn't spread toward the another areas because of this there is conductive hearing loss of 10 to 14 db which may be depend on site and size of perforation ear discharge is present which may be intermittent or continuous mucoid or may be mucopurulent mucoid have non foul smelling while mucopurulent have foul smelling with profuse ear discharge so from the site of infection we can classify central perforation into four parts tympanic membrane contain four quadrants look at this image if perforation occur in one quadrant then it is small type of perforation if involve two quadrants then it is medial type if involve three quadrants then it is large and four quadrants then it is subtotal so remember that total perforations are subtotal plus perforation occur in fibrous annulus which is the marginal part of tympanic membrane let's move toward treatment so there is ear discharge is present so disease may be bacteriological in origin for that we can give local and systemic antibiotics another one is meningoplasty in that there is repair of tympanic membrane is to be done and third one is tympanoplasty in which meningoplasty that is repair of tympanic membrane plus repair of ossicle should be done so this is the treatment of tubo tympanic disease let's move toward another one that is atico antral disease in this disease the infection can be spread toward another areas medially it can spread to inner ear and cause labyrinthitis superiorly there is a presence of brain so it may cause intracranial complications posteriorly there is mastoid so what your guess yes it may cause mastoiditis further posteriorly there is present of sigmoid sinus so in that it may cause the sigmoid sinus thrombosis so basically this infection can be spread toward another areas that's why we can say that it is unsafe type of infection also called as unsafe chronic suppurative otitis media so this disease is mainly associated with disease named as cholesteatoma what is cholesteatoma cholesteatoma it is a normal keratinized stratified squamous epithelium in abnormal place in the middle ear now let's move toward its type the types of cholesteatoma are first is congenital another one is acquired and acquired have two sub type primary acquired and secondary acquired now move toward first that is congenital cholesteatoma in congenital cholesteatoma there is a epithelium trap inside during or before the formation of middle ear clip that is before the birth that is congenital cholesteatoma acquired cholesteatoma it is the epithelium goes into middle ear after the birth that is it is does not trap during the formation of middle ear clip but it is occur after the birth
let's move to our first one that is primary acquired cholesteatoma primary acquired cholesteatoma have so many theories the first theory is witmax invagination theory or also called as retraction pocket theory in this theory witmax state that in acute otitis media that we discussed already there is negative pressure in the middle ear that's why the tympanic membrane pulls in also called as retraction of tympanic membrane it has epithelial and mucous layer epithelial sets up subsequently and get infected due to this infection there is a formation of pus which exert pressure and pockets grows in size more epithelial dies and cycle continues after a point it start eroding the bones erosion of bone it is due to release of enzymes from lysozymes of dead cells which activates osteoclast erosion of scutum is characteristic feature of primary acquired cholesteatoma subsequently it erodes the antrum and that's why we can say that this is aticoantral disease it is the most accepted theory most common site of primary acquired cholesteatoma is prusak space there are two other theories first one is rudy's basal cell hyperplasia theory another one is said squamous metaplasia theory this theory are not accepted but these are important for examination point of view let's move toward the clinical feature of primary acquired cholesteatoma due to this disease there is conductive hearing loss due to infection there is a formation of discharge discharge may be blood stained scanty may be purulent or foul smelling these are the characteristic of discharge of primary acquired cholesteatoma let's move to another one that is secondary acquired cholesteatoma secondary acquired cholesteatoma it is secondary to perforation in this there is a migration of squamous epithelium from external auditory canal into the middle ear there is a chronic inflammation or infection of mucous epithelium in middle ear which may transfer the epithelium of middle ear into the squamous epithelium and this term is called as squamous metaplasia these are the characteristic of secondary acquired cholesteatoma this is a very important topic first devise it all cholesteatoma have two types congenital and acquired in congenital epithelium trapped inside during or before the formation of middle ear cleft and acquired in secondary acquired there is epithelium from external auditory canal migrate into middle ear and in primary acquired cholesteatoma there is a retraction pocket theory and most common site of primary acquired cholesteatoma is prusak space let's move toward the management of aticoantral disease the management can be done by two methods first is pure tone audiometry and another one is high resolution ct scan let's move toward the treatment of aticoantral disease the treatment is done by mastoidectomy there are several type of mastoidectomy from which the first one is canal wall up mastoidectomy in this the common wall between the mastoid and middle ear is preserved that is the wall of posterior middle ear advantages hearing results are better due to normal positioning of tympanic membrane during tympanoplasty patients are allowed to swimming because there is a prevention of infection by posterior wall of middle ear disadvantages are rate of reoccurrence is high and reexploration in all cases after 6 months to rule out the cholesteatoma and second stage of this disease the other mastoidectomy that is canal wall down mastoidectomy in which they leave the mastoid cavity open to the external auditory canal so that disease area is fully exposed the second look after surgery is not required swimming can lead to infection because there is no preservation of posterior middle ear wall and there is a low rate of reoccurrence it is also called as classical modified radical mastoidectomy so this is all about the canal wall down mastoidectomy 
Let's move toward third one that is modified radical mastoidectomy in which we open the mastoid and middle ear and remember that in which we always preserve the conductive apparatus. If by chance we damage the apparatus then it will be repaired first. The primary aim of this method is the complete eradication of disease and the secondary aim is reservation of conductive hearing never at the cost of primary. So this is all about this disease. Thank you.